I thought everyone might be a little bit tired of hearing me talk about linear feedback shift registers. So I'd move on to another topic, cyclic redundancy checks and how they're implemented in hardware, which brings me back to linear feedback shift registers, this time the internal kind. Now, we have been talking about linear feedback shift registers for a while now, but the external type. Turns out there's an internal type which has just as many applications as the external type. When we started out this discussion, we were talking about something called a ring counter. And a ring counter was, well, if you remember, it was made of a bunch of single cell memory devices, these D flip-flops. And they were put, they were cascaded or put together in a sequence so that whenever you got a clock pulse, the value that was in one of them was shifted to the next one. And all these clock inputs were all tied together. And that gave us, well, this, this ability to take all the values and shift them over by one and then shift them over by one and then shift them over by one. And if we took the output of the last one the least significant bit, and made it the input of the next one, then it became a ring counter. And so if we started out with, say, 1001 in this ring counter, we got a clock pulse. The one from the least significant bit shifts around to the most significant bit, and all the other bits get shifted over by one position. We keep doing that. The zero from the least significant bit gets in the most significant bit, and everything gets shifted over. Do it again. We get a shift. Do it again, we get one more shift, and we find that we have a period of four. The period is equal to the number of D flip-flops we have in our shift registers. So we've got one, two, three, four clock pulses before we get back to the original value. Now, when we were talking about a linear feedback shift register, we started our discussion by, by inserting a linear function in this feedback loop. And so we had our linear function here. And the linear function was made of exclusive ORs. And we tapped off of these intermediate values, not all of them, but the, the ones that were important to us. And we took the value also, always took the value from the least significant position. And then whenever we, we looked at what was being input to our shift register, we found that an exclusive OR of this with the proper taps could give us a period of 2 to the n minus 1, 2 to the n minus 1, where n is equal to the number of these bits in our shift register. The minus 1 was because the all zeros case was not valid. If we had an all zeros case, what would happen is it would come out and give us a linear function. The exclusive OR of all zeros is going to give us a 0, and we would be locked into a period of size 1. With the internal linear feedback shift register, instead of inserting the linear function in the feedback, in other words, the output from the least significant bit going into the input of the most significant bit, now what we're going to do is we're going to tap off of that feedback in order to create linear functions between these D flip-flops. So that what happens is, is when we go to shift, before the value is passed directly from one of these bits to the next bit, it may or may not go through an exclusive OR combining it with the least significant bit. Let's try one of these. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put an exclusive OR here that is going to take the least significant bit and OR it, exclusive OR it, with the output from this uh, from this D flip-flop. And the rest of them will just go ahead and cascade like we have been. We're going to start with, well, this is this table's going to look a little different. What we're going to have is this is the A, B, C, and D flip-flops. So I'm going to put A, B, C, and D. Notice I left a little gap right there because we are not passing A directly into B. Instead, we're exclusive ORing it with D first. So this position right here is going to be A exclusive ORed with D. What's that going to look like? Well, let's go ahead and load our registers. 
with that initial value that we started out before with, 1001. Notice that, and remember that the two input exclusive or outputs a one if the inputs are different, outputs a zero if the inputs are the same. They're the same, A and D are the same in this case, so we have a zero there. And when we get a clock pulse, everything's gonna shift, and instead of A shifting directly into B, the A exclusive OR is shifted into B, and so we get zero and zero and zero, and this one, instead of going through a linear function before it comes into A, is gonna go directly into A, and we get one. All right, now, what is A exclusive ORD with D? Well, they're different now, so we're gonna put a one here. That one, when we get a clock pulse, is gonna be shifted, these three bits are gonna be shifted down to B, C, and D, so we've got one, zero, zero. The zero from the least significant bit position is gonna come into A, and then we have our, our next state, our next cycle. Same, zero, shift, zero, one, zero. This zero gets shifted into A. Now we've got same again, so zero, clock pulse shifts everything down, and then this zero gets shifted into A. Now A and D are different. Clock pulse gets everything shifted over. So notice that these three are always getting shifted into B, C, D. So this one gets shifted over here. Now you have a one and a zero, that's different, right? And notice that Taking A exclusive or D out of the expression, what we're looking for is do any of these values repeat themselves? They haven't yet. And so we've got these, these three bits right here shift over by one. This zero gets shifted into A. You've got same, so the exclusive or of A and D are zero. Get a clock pulse, move everything over by one. That zero comes over here. Now we've got different, so the A exclusive ORD with D is a 1. Clock pulse, everything gets shifted over. That 1 comes around here. You've got the same, so there's a 0 there. Still, we haven't duplicated any of these values yet. There's no duplicates yet in our row. And remember that the A exclusive or D, this is not part of the contents of the registers. A, B, C, D, those are the contents of the registers. This signal right here is what's coming out of this exclusive or gate. So now everything, these three bits get shifted over. We get zero, one, zero. The one from D moves into A. They're different, so the exclusive or is one. Now I get another clock pulse, one, zero, one. This zero gets shifted over here. We have different, so we have a one there. Clock pulse moves these three bits over by one into B, C, D. We get one, one, zero. This one moves over to A. Now we've got different, so there's a one there. How long is this gonna go on? Well, it turns out that just like the external LFSR, the internal LFSR, if we have the appropriate ex internal functions there, the exclusive ORs, it's gonna go on for two to the N minus one. That is an appropriate tap. It's gonna go for two to the four minus one in this case, or 15 cycles. So far we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. Looks like we've got a few more. So, different excuse me, yeah, different one, these three bits get shifted over, and then the zero gets shifted up here. We've got different, there's a one there. We get a clock pulse, these three ones move over, this one moves over to A, we've got the same, so there's a zero. We get a clock pulse, zero, one, one moves over, the one from here moves up here, and now we have same, so we've got a zero. We got a clock pulse, zero, zero, one, these three bits move over, that one moves up here, we've got same, so zero, but notice now what we've got, and I hope I've got this, uh, got enough room on the board here, now what we've got is the same value which shows that we cycled, and we cycled after 15 clock pulses. Let's do another one. 
This time what I'm going to do is I'm going to tap off of that feedback signal, the one coming from the least significant bit, D, and I'm going to exclusive it, exclusive or it with C and use that as the input to D. All right, so D is gonna come out and go immediately into an exclusive OR with C, and what you'll have is just this tight loop right here that's going to define what the next value is for D, which is gonna get routed around A. See how this works. Well, we first of all, we have A, B, C, and then those are those three bits right there. Let's figure out what this intermediate value of C exclusive OR with D is and that'll be the input for our next value of D. We're going to start out with 1001 in our latches again. Now, what's C exclusive word with D? Well, these two are different, so it's going to have a 1 in it. We get a clock pulse. A and B move to B and C. C exclusive word with D moves to D, and then D moves to A. So D moves to A. A and B move to C, B and C and then C exclusive word with D moves to D. These two are different, so there's a one. We get a clock pulse, A and B move to B and C, D moves to A, and then D exclusive word with D, C exclusive word with D moves to D. These are the same, zero. Get a clock pulse, D moves to A, A and B move to B and C, and then C exclusive word with D moves to D. And we keep doing this, so different, and so forth. We keep doing this until we figure out when we get our cycle. And just barely caught on the bottom of the camera is the cycle that we made. So now after 15, count them, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 12, 13, 14, 15 cycles, we looped around, and that made another internal linear feedback shift register with a different sequence this time, but it still gave us a sequence of the full 15 cycles. Just like the external linear feedback shift register has many applications, so does the internal linear feedback shift register, including once again, pseudo random number generation, but also error detection and even error correction. In our next episode, we're going to re-examine the cyclic redundancy check in order to see how to implement it using a linear feedback shift register. The internal version. Until then, remember that while the scope of what makes a computer is immense, it's still all just ones and zeros.